Chapter 5 Fire It was March. One night, I was in bed, but I was not asleep. The house was quiet. Suddenly, I heard a sound in the corridor outside my room. Who's there? I said. Nobody answered. Then I heard a strange laugh. I got out of my bed and I went quietly to the door. I listened. I heard another sound. Somebody was walking up the stairs to the top corridor. Then I heard somebody close the door. Was that Grace Pools? I said to myself, Yes, it was Grace. Why was she laughing? And why is she walking in the house at night? Is she mad? I must tell Mr. S. Fairfax about this. One will speak to her now. I put on some clothes and I open the door. There was a candle on the floor outside my room. The candle was burning. There was thick smoke in the corridor. I went into the corridor. I looked around me. The door of Mr. Rochester's bedroom was open. And the smoke was coming from Mr. Rochester's room. I ran into the room. Wake up, sir. What happened, Jane? There was a fire, sir. Grace Poole tried to kill you. I sat in a chair by the window. Time passed. At last, Mr. Rochester returned. Please don't worry, Jane, he said. Grace Poole is a strange woman. But she won't hurt anybody tonight. I stood up. Good night, sir, I said. Mr. Rochester held my hand. He looked at me and he smiled. Thank you, my dear friend, he said. You saved my life tonight, Jane. Good night, sir, I said again. I went back to my bed. I was very tired, but at first I could not sleep. Suddenly I understood something. I loved Mr. Rochester. He had smiled at me. He had held my hand. Did he love me? I did not know. But I thought about Mr. Rochester for a long time. I did not see Mr. Rochester the next day. He did not send for me. In the evening, I went down to Mr. S. Fairfax's sitting room. The housekeeper was looking out of the window. The weather has been good today, Mr. S. Fairfax said. Mr. Rochester had a good day for his journey. His journey? Where has he gone? I asked. I was surprised. He has gone to Ingram Park, Mr. S. Fairfax replied. Mr. Rochester will stay there for a week or more. He has many friends. All his friends will be at Ingram Park this week. Will there be any ladies at Ingram Park? One asked. Yes, Mr. S. Fairfax said. There will be many ladies there. Miss Blanche Ingram will be there. Mr. Rochester has known her for many years. Is Miss Ingram beautiful? I asked. She is very beautiful, Mr. S. Fairfax said. Will Mr. Rochester marry her? I asked. Mr. S. Fairfax smiled. I don't know, Miss Sayre. She replied, I don't know. I was very unhappy. I went up to my bedroom. I looked in my mirror. Jane Eyre, I said to myself, you are not pretty and you are poor. Mr. Rochester will never marry you.
He will marry Miss Blanche Ingram. She is a rich lady. You are a poor governess. Forget Mr. Rochester. Jane Eyre. Forget him. Chapter 6. Guests at Thornfield Hall. Two weeks later, a letter arrived for Mr. S. Fairfax. Mr. Rochester will return on Thursday, Mr. S. Fairfax said. Some of his friends will come here with him. There will be many guests at Thornfield Hall. On Thursday evening, Mr. S. Fairfax, Adele, and I were in Adele's bedroom. Mr. S. Fairfax was looking out of the window. The guests are arriving now, Mr. S. Fairfax said. I went to the window and I looked out. There were three carriages. Two people were riding horses. Mr. Rochester was riding his big black horse. A beautiful young woman was riding a white horse. Mr. S. Fairfax pointed to the young woman. That is Miss Ingram, the housekeeper said. Then she went downstairs. Adele wanted to go downstairs too. No, Adele, I said. We cannot go downstairs tonight. Mr. Rochester is talking to his guests. The next day, Mr. S. Fairfax came into the schoolroom. Mr. Rochester wants you to meet his guests tonight, Miss Eyre, she said. Adele must meet them too. Later, Adele and I went quietly into the sitting room. And soon, eight ladies came into the room. One of them was tall, dark, and very beautiful. She was Blanche Ingram. Adele ran towards her. Good evening, beautiful lady, she said in French. What a pretty little girl, Blanche Ingram said. Miss Ingram spoke to the other ladies. And she spoke to Adele, but she did not speak to me. Half an hour later, the gentleman came into the room. I looked at Mr. Rochester. He saw me, but he did not speak to me. Miss Ingram pointed at Adele. Why doesn't this little girl live at a school, Mr. Rochester? She asked. Adele learns her lessons at home, Mr. Rochester replied. She has a governess. Oh, yes. That small woman by the window, Miss Ingram said. I had many governesses. I hated all of them. They were all ugly and stupid. Later, Miss Ingram and Mr. Rochester sang some songs together, Mr. Rochester had a fine voice. I listened to the songs, then I left the room. Mr. Rochester followed me. What is wrong, Jane? he asked. Nothing is wrong, sir, I said. But I am tired. I am going to my room. Good night, sir. You're tired. And you are unhappy too, mister. Rochester replied. There are tears in your eyes. Rest now, Jane. But please come and meet my guests tomorrow evening. Don't forget my... Don't forget, Jane. The guests stayed at Thornfield Hall for two weeks. Every evening, I went to the sitting room with Adele. Nobody spoke to me. Mr. Rochester and Miss Ingram were always together. One afternoon, Mr. Rochester went to Millcoat. He returned late in the evening. I met him at the front door. Another guest has arrived, sir, I told him. His name is Mr. Mason. 
He has come from the West Indies. Suddenly, Mr. Rochester's face was pale. He held my hand tightly. Mason, the West Indies. Mason, he said. Are you ill, sir? I asked. Jane, my little friend, I've had a shock, he said. Bring me a glass of wine, please. I went quickly to the dining room. I returned with a glass of wine, and I gave it to Mr. Rochester. What are my guests doing? he asked. They are eating and laughing, sir, I replied. Mr. Mason is talking to the other guests. One day, they will all hate me, Mr. Rochester said. Now go into the dining room again. Tell Mason to meet me in the library. I gave Mr. Mason the message. Then I went to my bedroom. I got into my bed. Later, I heard Mr. Rochester coming up the stairs with Mr. Mason. They were laughing and talking. Soon I was asleep.